one and all. It is my pleasure and privilege to welcome our expert for today's session, Professor Dr. D. A. I. Dayaratne, Director of Business Linkage Cell, Sabra Gamua University of Sri Lanka. I would also like to welcome Dr. Bamnin Chunaram, Managing Director, Vishesh School of Management, Dr. S. M. Anas Iqbal, Director, Vishesh School of Management, and all the dear participants to our fifth online guest lecture under Vishesh Talk on Monetization of Intellectual Property in Universities. Universities are the hotbeds and melting spots of innovators, creators, researchers, and engineers, and ideas, vision, mission, opportunities, collaboration, and partnership. The economy in our time is dominated and driven by knowledge. That is the reason we call it knowledge economy. And in order to extract maximum possible economic gain from our research and innovation centers, that is university, it is important that each stakeholder focus upon creating awareness, getting more and more patents done, uh, finding viable sources of sustainable development, building academic industry partnerships, favorable policy decisions, etc. We'll gain significant insight on this topic in the coming session. Today, with the presence of Dr. Dayaratne and Dr. Paris, it gives us uh, utmost pleasure and joy because we share a special bond with the Sabra Gamua University, Sri Lanka, in the form of MOU that we have signed with the university in the year 2016 in our sixth international conference. Of course, the MOU uh, are a great source, uh, we can say, are a great drivers of cultural or knowledge exchange. So, yes, thank you so much, sir, for joining us. We are truly honored with your presence. Now, moving ahead with our program, I request Dr. Esamana Sikbal to please present. Welcome. Thank you, Ashri. Um, a very good afternoon to everyone. I warmly welcome Dr. Hinduni Dayaratna, sir. He is a senior most professor of uh, Faculty of Management Studies at uh, Sabragama University of Sri Lanka. Uh, I also welcome Dr. Ushan Peri, sir who is the key person and uh, who become the bridge to organize such a beautiful and wonderful uh, lecture. Uh, I also welcome Dr. Bamnen Dami Norang, uh, Managing Director of Vishy School of Management and all the participants who are connected from the different part of this country. Um, in this, uh, uh, our Vishy's talk series of online guest lecture programs. Uh, today's topic is very important as a uh, monetization of intellectual property of universities because uh, universities persons are uh, too much involved in research and development activities in form of inventions, innovations, so many new research methodologies, research papers, but uh, they are uh, at the same time they are also facing if they are inventing something but could not be uh, go place for uh, copyright for the um, uh, to reserve their intellectual property. So uh, it's uh, our duty and all the education. It's the duty of all education institutions, universities, and concerned authorities that uh, what academic academicians or researchers are doing, kind of any kind of inventions or research in terms of research paper or in the physical forms of the in the field of science, they have they should get the proper right of this particular inventions and innovations. Uh, in the, so many countries, even the banks have, uh, they are accepting their intellectual property as the collateral to give the secure loan from the banks. Uh, but is a, a, it is a time and um, it's a time to how to, how to sell and, and how to convert our invention or innovations uh, in terms of money and how we we can do for the monetization of their uh, inventions in terms of uh, intellectual properties of uh, education institutions. So it is a very good topic. Uh, and um, I hope that all the participants will learn a lot from this uh, wonderful topic uh, from my senior most professor and imminent speaker of this sessions. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, I welcome you all. What to your Sharif. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now I would like to request Dr. T.U.I. Paris, Faculty of Management uh, Studies, yes. Sabra Gamoa, University of Sri Lanka, to please introduce our speaker of the day. 
sir please but thank you ashri uh, first of all good afternoon to all of you uh, actually i deem it is a great pleasure to introduce our resource person sir so your video is not uh, visible so it's a great pleasure to introduce our resource person professor dayaratna uh, to this online gathering uh, professor dayaratna is an eminent professor in finance attached to the department of accountancy and finance sabaragam university of sri lanka he obtained his phd from columbia university uh, his area of uh, expertise is actually financial economics his main research interests basically lies on investment analysis green finance capital market structures basically he 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 uh, he apply these uh, research areas to the developing uh, context developing countries context so when it comes to the uh, webinar today so which is actually on monetizing the intellectual capital in universities professor dayaratna is the is the one most uh, professionally qualified resource person to talk on this regard so because uh, uh, if you look at his experience on on academic and administrative uh, capacities in the university and also uh, as i said as you said earlier he is the director of the business uh, university uh, business linkage cell so with that cell actually what he is doing is uh, he do practice these uh, things in the university so i believe uh, he can share a lot with you regarding this uh, area of uh, interest so with that uh, i like to introduce our uh, eminent professor to this webinar so thank you very much thank you so much sir for uh, introducing our esteemed speaker of the day thanks once again it is really an honor for us to uh, get an opportunity to join with you thank you so much now i request dr daya ratne to please share his experience and words with us right uh... Good afternoon to all, uh, and thank you very much. And there, it is a your video is not visible. Oh, sir. Right. Uh, uh, good afternoon to all, uh, and uh, thank you very much for having me for this uh, webinar. Uh, and i must be thankful to dr feris for inviting me he is the one who invited for me to uh, uh, deliver this uh, webinar and also i must be thankful to the, all the academics and the managing director of the business business school for having me for this uh, webinar so we know so we all are in a very difficult situation because of this covid 19 so uh, covid 19 gradually invading the uh, entire globe and also uh, sri lanka we had difficult time but gradually we have contained the spreading the virus but still i think uh, india is in a difficult situation but still uh, so they are managing the managing well the all the situations and today actually uh, so what i am uh, Uh, going to share with you is a uh, timely important topic uh, monetizing the university intellectual property for economic development so so we are in the knowledge economy 21st century is considered as the uh, year or the the period where the intellectual property matter for the value value creation of universities as well as the uh, corporations so therefore i selected this topic to uh, share with you as the director of the university business in case cell so my task is to get the university inventions and and get the protections and monetize or make money out of the uh, university inventions so universities uh, we have traditionally universities engaging universities engaging basically traditionally three aspects teaching research and community work 
So when it comes to monetization or commercialization of IP is still quite new to developing countries. So this is true in the developed countries. They have started about 50 years ago. US, they have started this process uh, about 50 years ago. But still, so we have only few years of few uh, only two years of history when it comes to monetization of intellectual properties in the university. So therefore, so we have yes our core responsibility as the university academics is to teach. So we are very effectively doing our teaching, and also as research. So we do research as academics. So as part of our academic development, we have to undertake research. We have to do research. And also, as a national university, we are interested with the responsibility to serve to the community. So our academics, so continuously they engage in community work, but still, so this concept, the monetization of intellectual property, we started actually uh, what, about 20 years back, sorry, two years back uh, with the uh, uh, funding assistance of the US, uh, World Bank. So, yeah, what is, uh, what is the intellectual property uh, commercialization? Right? Intellectual property monetization refers to the act act of using intellectual property generated by the university to generate revenue. So we, so by monetizing or by, by commercializing our intellectual properties, universities try to make money out of the inventions. So that is the basic theme of the uh, topic that we are going to uh, discuss today. And according to World Intellectual Property Organization, intellectual property refers to the creation of, creation of the mind, such as inventions, literary and artistic works, designs and symbols, names, images used in commerce. So this is simple definition given by the uh, World Intellectual Property Organization. And universities also create inventions, and they are patentable. And even after patents, we can go for trademarks. We can get the rights, property rights. So we can use properties for commerce. So that is the main role of the university business linkage sale of our universities or the globally we call tech transfer office. So no, normally uh, global international jargon for the uh, university business linkage sale is the tech transfer office. Uh, so main role is to take university inventions and get the protections and uh, commercialize it to the industry. So universities uh, transfer knowledge in different ways to the community. Publications so as academics and students so very cont continuously publish their journal articles in reputed journals and teaching and education of students and employment of graduates. So we employ after graduation, they work, go to the industry, they, they work in public and private sector organizations. So, and conferences, academics uh, attend conferences, they share their knowledge with the other uh, parts of the world, the countries and other academics and even the industry. And consultations, academics, they undertake consultations uh, with the and sometimes they engage with collaborative research with the industry. So these are the various forms of uh, uh, giving knowledge or the transferring knowledge to the society or the industry. And this is uh, uh, licensing and formation of startups. This is new concept to uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, I think this is even. Uh, a new concept for the uh, developing countries. Uh, yeah. So this, uh, how this, uh, yeah, the commercialization creates value for inventors and the other stakeholders. Yeah, inventors, yeah, monetization of intellectual property creates value for the inventors, so they can recover their R&D costs and also they can have more 
funds for further R&D expenses or R&D projects. And universities can get uh, royalties or the uh, revenues from licensing the commercial, uh, uh, intellectual properties. This money can be used for students' welfare and for the betterments of the staff, staff training, and also the society gets uh, so products and services uh, for their decent living. Therefore, if the university starts uh, commercializing the you know, intellectual purpose to the uh, industries, the benefits uh, we get vast benefits and the different stakeholders are getting benefit out of the university inventions. So this is our beneficiary plan, our university. So recently we drafted our uh, policy statement, uh, IP policy statement. So according to our IP policy statement, we have given 80% of the revenues generated from the inventions to the inventors and 15% to the uh, uh, respective department or the inventors department and the yes, the balance to the university or university business linkage chain. So why we have given more percentage of uh, image, the, the revenues generated from the uh, commercialization to further promote R&D. So if the university gets larger portions of the image, uh, income, so, so we cannot encourage the academics to undertake further uh, research. Therefore, we have given larger portion of the revenue to the university inventors. And also when it comes, when it comes to consultancies, so our academics undertake consultancies in various uh, stake, various uh, companies. And we have policy there. So 80% goes to the yes, consultants and 10% and uh, to the department and uh, to the business linkage sales. 5%. So this is the beneficiary plan. So we recently we developed this and we have got the approval. Uh, and also this is uh, similar uh, for all other uh, 15 universities in Sri Lanka. We have 15 national universities in Sri Lanka. So about two years back, so we all established this uh, business linkage cell. And also we have already drafted this uh, 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 intellectual property policy. So this is part of uh, intellectual property policy, how the revenue is distributed among various stakeholders. Yeah, so what are the common issues when it comes to commercialization? So developing countries. So this is common to even Sri Lanka, India, and other uh, underdeveloped countries. There's no intellectual property policies at the university actually. At most of the universities, uh, we don't have uh, IP policies. Uh, and no dedicated trans uh, yeah, uh, uh, technology transfer officers. Right? So there's no office to handle all these because the, the commercialization process involves rigorous process. It requires involvement of the inventors and university administrations, lawyers, marketers, and we have to carry out market surveys. Therefore, this is a coordinated effort uh, to take the university inventions to the uh, for industry uh, uh, partners or to, to the industry. And uh, yeah, so there is confusion about whether universities are allowed to commercialize IP. Right? So normally the research studies or, or the innovations uh, coming out of the research are funded by the university or the government. So who can own the ownership? There's no clear cut policy in developing countries. And when it comes to US, they have very powerful act, legislation past 1980s, so Bayh-Dole Act. Right? So university has, so under this act, the universities are given the freedom to license and get the IP rights. So there is no such powerful legislations in developing countries yet. So we have to have, we have to develop these legislations. Uh, and lack of clarity on ownership, yes, of the 
intellectual property produced in universities, as I uh, pointed out earlier. The absence of industry engagement by universities, still the university, the emissions, uh, the universities, the academics, they do, they conduct uh, research and they do st uh, research studies and they are not linked with the industry. And also the inventions coming out of the university size are still in the basic uh, level. So we have, we have to further develop these uh, uh, inventions to put fit into market with the industry, industry partners. So therefore, so we have, so both industries and universities, they, they have to have a very good understanding. We both should have a mutual trust. So, the, so in our nations, so developing countries still, so this is very lacking, this area. And absence of commercialization skills within university, there is no dedicated office in most of the universities to look after commercialization process. And also lack of skills, so legal aspects. So how many patent lawyers are there in the country? So a so lot of issues are there. And the absence of uh, intellectual property management skills in the corporate sector. So corporate sector is still, so they still corporate sector look at the, uh, yeah, they don't uh, yeah, realize the value of the intellectual uh, intangible assets. Still the corporate sector believe that the, it is the tangible asset that creates value for the corporates. No, in the 21st century, the IP is the, or the intangible asset is the oil of the 21st century. Therefore, so more value is being created by the uh, intellectual properties for the business organizations. Therefore, so still, so, uh, the skills very not in a productive or conducive manner and lack of potential patent drafting skills so this is uh, another uh, issue so our inventors our researchers they do research and they publish in reputed journals and they claim the uh, authorship and that's all so they don't start filling patents and getting patent rights and this is because of uh, the lack of patent drafting skills. So how to, the very importantly, if they haven't uh, drafted the claim of the patents, so they cannot uh, most probably, so there's a high possibility to reject the patents. So therefore the skills gap is there among the university academies. And university uh, in Lanka, we have uh, Taken some initiatives. Uh, uh, these are some initiatives uh, in all universities, as I mentioned earlier. So we have established uh, university business linkage cell or tech transfer offices, and we have already it is already funded by the World Bank grants. So each and every university was given uh, 150 uh, lakhs to promote uh, these offices to establish these offices to uh, purchase infrastructure, office equipment, and even to uh, 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 yeah, legal fees, to uh, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, facilities or the uh, options are given in this uh, World Bank projects uh, to uh, start this uh, business saying, linkage sales in the universities in Sri Lanka. And also technical transfer directors already appointed all the universities uh, and the managers, it's a good full-time job. So we have appointed managers for all the universities and IP policies have been already adopted uh, in the universities. And also, so we have discussed still uh, uh, the, some legal aspects. So we have discussions uh, with the government to establish uh, companies limited by guarantee because universities are there to uh, produce graduates, not to produce uh, products. So therefore, we have to be careful. If the university start manufacturing products and making money, so your our mission okay, so will be diverted to so another angle, another 
uh, way. Therefore, you have to be careful. Therefore, you know, the UGC has taken initiatives to initiatives to uh, establish uh, companies limited by guarantee because we cannot. Uh, if you get the uh, equity or position in the, uh, if you commercialize the unions or commercialization process, so therefore, so we cannot uh, as fund publicly funded universities. So we cannot uh, put public funds at risk. Therefore, so we have some discussions with the UGC, and also the all technology transfer directors were given training in the, so all were given training in US. Uh, and so they could uh, get training in University of New Hampshire, uh, Science Foundations, uh, USA. So this was, uh, this gave us actually, so initially we had not any uh, much understanding about this commercialization process in uh, Sri Lanka. So this was, uh, we have only two years history of commercializing the uh, intellectual property. And so this gave us actually confidence to work on this area. And TTO directors and still, so we are following some courses supported by uh, well intellectual property organizations. So this is how the UC Lanka has taken steps to uh, commercialize uh, uh, inventions of the universities. And also we have established TISC, Technology Nose. Uh, technology you know, support centers to facilitate our inventors to do their prior search when it comes to patent. Sometimes uh, they come up with prior art, still uh, they have not, uh, uh, yeah, the novelty issue, right? novelty issue, uh, patentability, right? So, uh, so we undertake uh, prior art search and uh, freedom to operate search. Uh, and also we have been given uh, uh, the facility to, uh, to uh, uh, use uh, uh, commercial databases in addition to free databases. Uh, so these are the initiatives taken by the government uh, to enhance the commercialization of university inventions. So these are the role actually. Uh, so we transform university intellectual properties to uh, uh, and to industry and get exclusive rights. So we create value for our inventors by creating exclusivity on their inventions. So what is this? Yeah. So why? So your IP is a resource for you. If it goes to competitors, it worth nothing. Therefore, we have to create the property. We have to get the, exclude all the others and get the property right. If you fill a patent, you have you have right to use, sell it or what, you can do whatever things you like for 20 years in Sri Lanka. I think it is globally, uh, it is similar for all the countries. Uh, it's, there are some exceptions uh, in some countries, but uh, globally, the period is, uh, uh, 20 years. And you can get the exclusive rights for 20 years. You can exclude all the others. You can enjoy premium price in the market when you commercialize your products if you have exclusive rights uh, for your inventions. And role of the, so this is my role actually as the uh, TTO director. So we have seven faculties. And so Researchers, we have given some grants. University itself, we have given some research grants. And also World Banks, they have the funded for some uh, various uh, projects. So, so all these, uh, they have given a condition here. So they have to commercialize their inventions coming out of the research through UBLC. They have to commercialize their inventions through ULB. So therefore we get uh, invention disclosures. So we have a uh, invention disclosure four in our uh, cell. So first they fill the invention disclosures to the in, uh, university business in case cell. Then, so we assess the patentability, whether this, this is patentable or not. So there are three aspects basically. 
it should be novel idea and there should be better some steps uh, even inventory steps and commercial relevance so if it is in industry if it is not relevant to the industry so we cannot go uh, fill the failure so this is these are basic uh, things that should be fulfilled to get a to fill the patents and as uh, protection filled by the so we bear all the costs so university we have funds so all the uh, costs related to patent fillings even for uh, tct applications uh, international patents so so we bear the cost the sell uh, bear the cost uh, and we have marketing plan then licensing and it we start licensing and negotiations and we share the income according to our ip policy so here so once we get the protections uh, we have to uh, see the market so we have to we conduct market demand service whether this product or the inventions has a market place or market value so this is a normally license uh, commercialization process adopted by uh, uh, our university this is also common for other universities as well as i think uh, yeah then uh, so these are yeah how do you protect your ip so if it is patent so we can uh, fill the patents we can get the exclusive rights for 20 years and also it should if it uh, fulfills the invent two steps and the novelty and commercial relevance you can go for patents and trademarks so we can have a strategy because uh, patents period will lapse after 20 years so if you can develop with the patent very good trademarks so we can still be in the market so even after 20 years if you have a very uh, very good uh, accept market accepted trademarks or logo so we can continuously be in the market or oh, trade secrets so if you are not disclosing your inventions you can keep it as uh, trade secrets and copyright and geographical in indications plant varieties industrial designs layout design and traditional knowledge so these are the yeah, forms of uh, some examples so the ways of getting ip rights so traditional knowledge so as we sri lanka india we have traditional knowledge are in the medicines so so we can protect on the traditional uh, uh, knowledge and also uh, layout industrial layout or designs so, so these are the some ways of protecting the ip generated by universities but uh, mostly so we go for patents and we are not going for trade secret protections because uh, so we are university we go for licensing uh, and sometimes designs so ip and protection tools if it is inventions we can apply for patents and proprietary information so we can go for trade secrets than a patent so so you can if as long as you can keep the secret you can make money so world top class secret is coca cola they maintain their secrets for 100 years so that is also one of the world leading brands it remains uh, within uh, i think uh, yes uh, 10 within 10 of most valuable brands in the world so they they have a secret very good trade secret still they are in the market and brand logos trademarks and shapes of design industrial designs we, we can get the protection by filling industry designs and if it is fixed work or film photograph we can go for copyrights and universities used to uh, 
if you have to publish a paper in a reputed journal, we can go for copyright. Or if it is artistic work, even we can go for related rights. So these are the inventions and the protect the alternatives we have to get the protections. But still, so people have not disclosed their inventions globally. This is uh, globally. Only 90% of the inventions are known to the public. Sorry, only 10% of the inventions are known to the public globally. Still, 90% remains as secret. So they are not disclosed to the general public. But actually, if, if companies or the universities feel more patents, then the knowledge goes to the industry and they will create more inventions based on the uh, inventions or they will come up with uh, new technologies or similar technologies but still 90 percent of the knowledge remains not cannot be seen to the public only tip of the iceberg can be seen so these are world top brands uh, trademarks word marks so there are different ways of uh, uh, getting trademarks this is a uh, word marks so google it fulfills word and also the mark visa coca-cola canon so these are top uh, global brands and again design marks type of marks design marks these are design facebook design McDonald's design, Huawei, Pizza Hut, and Ceylon Tea. This is the geographical indications. GI, so our Sri Lankan tea, globally known as Ceylon Tea, and Sri Lankan Telecom. Design marks. And slogans. Mark with the slogans. Right? Uh, think different. Apple. Wearable napkins, device, slogans, and motions. So, if it is telegram or the films, so we can get the protections, mark protections, so motion marks. Yeah, and uh, every country we have uh, national offices. Uh, we have filling options. So we have no strategy to go to outside or to go to the, uh, the global market. So we can fill the uh, patents with the national patent office. So if you have a plan to go to the uh, industry or the, the global industry, global market, say for example, if there is an invention in Sri Lanka, so we cannot go to, we cannot start uh, business in India without getting a patent. Then. So we can go for PCT filling under Patent Corporation Treaty. So we are also signatories to the, uh, uh, this treaty. And also there are about 192 countries, members. So this uh, facilitates us to fill patents in one application. And if I'm interested in go to the US, I have to go fill US uh, Patent application in US video. So if I further need to go to Europe, so I can go to uh, European Patent Office and fill the patents. So these are some options where we can fill the patents, but that depends on our commercialization strategies. If we are going beyond the country, we have to fill, we have to go for international patents or so, uh, fill the PCT applications to access to the uh, global market. If not, uh, we'll be uh, so we cannot. Yeah, then, uh, yes, what are disputes? So, this is uh, very importantly. Uh, earlier, we, had, we haven't had any IP policy in the university. So, who can claim there was a dispute and misunderstanding who can claim the ownership generated or derived from inventions? A research funded by the government, still the government is funding for university research, still there's no clear-cut uh, 
guidelines who can claim the ownership but uh, i think uh, in india so we have already started uh, to win the list it's in the parliament uh, uh, yeah by those similar acts but sri lanka still we have not started uh, to uh, bring the legislations to clarify who will own the ownership if it is funded by the government but us if it is federally funded the universities have been given uh, freedom to get the uh, right and also commercialize under the university name and also the income can be uh, transferred to university uh, accounts but here still so we have a uh, government uh, has to make uh, an initiative to uh, bring the legislations uh, but uh, uh, india uh, i think you have already started this process uh, it's in the parliament uh, and research funded by the university still yeah so this is guided by the uh, university uh, ip policy we have ip policy now so earlier we haven't had ip policy according to the ip policy if the research is funded by the university the individual inventors cannot fill the patents by their own name it should be filled by the uh, university name so by the university business linkage sales and also research funded by the funding agents so sometimes uh, there may be some agreements between funding agents and the inventors so in the absence of funding so agreements by default the ownership comes to university according to our policy and there are some researchers uh, going on with the industry partners and similarly if there is no agreements the by, by default the ownership goes to the university and also if the research is uh, uh, relying on the university resources who can claim the ownership our staff we have medical faculty we have uh, agricultural faculty we have licensed faculty so we have seven faculties so they are heavily using university properties for their research so therefore so they cannot fill the patents according to our new IP policy they have to fill the patents by the university name uh, so this is uh, earlier we haven't had such a, a policy but we have now we have now formalized we have largely formalized in this process now and earlier before two years so this this uh, command patent fillings uh, there's no actually any understanding about our academies how to who can right uh, who can get the ownership or uh, or even uh, how to fill the patents uh, under the you know, with the national intellectual property office now so we have formalized everything and also the research carried out during working career sometimes employees we have uh, very clearly specified in the ip policy during uh, it is very unlikely yeah, coming up uh, an inventions being at home while working in the university works of academics they they are supposed to work in full time in the universities so therefore even working career if they come up with a working career then still they have to fill the patents under the university uh, name but if the inventor can prove that so i didn't use university resources or i did not uh, work on my research during my working time right so there we have an so exception here if the employee can justify so i did this at home so therefore we have given some freedom uh, to uh, go for uh, to fill the patents uh, by the inventor's name and also the research funded uh, by yes own research so if it is own so we have no any ob objections but the event has to give a declaration so i did this uh, my own so i didn't use any university resource therefore uh, so i have tried to get the protections in my own name so this is a so ownership uh, so we have clarified the ownership issue with our ip policy so we have 
given uh, clauses uh, for each items in our policy to minimize the disputes among uh, university and the uh, inventors. So we have two options so on inventor own model or institution own model. And now actually uh, the developed countries, they go for yeah, institution own model. So we also now started this uh, uh, the inventions or the ownership goes to the uh, university right? that is invention the institution on model so we are also practicing um, mostly institution on model yeah so what there are what what are the benefits of uh, having or filling the patents or getting the protection under the university name the filling cost will be borne by the university we have allocations so today also I assigned two uh, patents applications. Uh, so we pay patent filling costs. Uh, and also we assist uh, inventors to go uh, set prior search. So we have subscribed to uh, Durban uh, Innovation Q Plus. Uh, so we have, uh, it's a commercial database. Uh, we can, we have uh, accessibility. So our inventors come and uh, do their prior search here. Or, so we have our manager. The managers help them to uh, do their prior search and paid drafting and even freedom to operate search if you are going beyond the country so, uh, uh, so we can do we are doing freedom to operate search um, and ip is maintained by the university we pay annual renewal fees Actually, in was in licensing process, we uh, contact licensing partners and we draft licensing agreements and and also the university business link is still play a major role in uh, like, uh, the negotiation table with the uh, industry partners. And university reputation goes size, the ranking goes, university will be ranked. Uh, and also the represent the court in case of infringements. So if the inventors have filled their patent in their own, own names, they are in case of infringements, if, if the invention is infringing or the, the patent is infringing the another patents, the inventor has to go to the court individually, but university, if it is owned by the university, university look after the patent and all the, the all the legal issues will be uh, resolved by the university and also the technology gets more recognitions if it is owned by the universities we can very easily uh, find licensing partners even we can get global recognitions uh, and so manage risk product liability risk in case of the uh, uh, any th liability due to the product uh, the consuming product Sometimes, uh, especially uh, uh, maybe drugs. Sometimes so there may be some side effect. Right? So any legal charges, so university will look after, will face the legal charges. But individually, actually, when it comes to uh, this uh, medical, pharmaceutical inventions, it's very difficult to uh, get protections individually. So it should be institution on model and invalidation sometimes right? sometimes the the third party will uh, in file and actions to invalidate the patents the university will uh, interfere intervene all this process therefore so inventors they know the, the benefit, benefit of filling the patents by the university now so therefore so we get the uh, patents and we get more and more invention disclosures uh, and during this uh, this year we have got about 30 invention disclosures from faculties and also we have filled about seven PC, uh, seven patent applications and also we have already filled one PCT applications and also another PCT is on the way so therefore now this start this process has already been started in uh, Sri Lanka universities so it was a very 
which was vacuum about two years back. Then uh, so valuations. Uh, so we do valuations. Uh, yeah, assess the patents. Uh, business linkage sale. So we assess the uh, marketability. Right? So at least we have to if the balance assess the balance patent life. If it is ten years, so we have to see the market potential for the ten years balance ten years. So we do market survey. So we assist inventors to do market demand surveys, and also commercial value. So we undertake valuations after market demand survey. So we do valuations, IP valuations, because this is very important. So if we go to the negotiation table, we have to, if we can speak with the industry partners with numbers. So we we get more bargaining power in the commercialization table. If I just tell him, so I have this variable dimensions, so 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 we cannot justify. But we have to show value. So this is very rigorous process. IP valuations, unlike uh, stock valuation or bond valuations, there is no benchmark. But uh, still, we manage to value the uh, our uh, inventions or the uh, patents or IPs before we go to the uh, negotiation table with the uh, licensing partners and so future is competitors so all the assessments so will be uh, undertaken by the uh, university business link itself so this is normal valuation uh, uh, formula dcf valuations uh, so there are various methods of valuing uh, you know ip but this is very simple uh, method uh, so we have two options if if the university has an invention we can license it out to a licensing partner or university can start business business incubators accelerators spin off spin out and as a national university so we are not going to take take the equity position of our inventions so we so we go for licensing agreements because uh, still uh, the UGC, uh, the according to UGC guidelines, so universities cannot get the equity position in Sri Lanka. And what we do is we sell our inventions to the outside partners. But still we have discussions to start uh, limited liability companies, but still we have not finalized this process. And forms of loan transfer yeah, created by university, spin off created by university, startup outside the university. Technology is owned by university, licensed to, uh, if it is startup, licensed to the startup, uh, startup by university. And financed by university outside fund, managed by university staff and outside uh, university. So this. Uh, startup and the spin-off so the comparisons and uh, licensing process uh, so uh, yeah we this is a legal process uh, so we have technical licensing agreements uh, before we sell our products we have to come to a legal uh, legal understanding both licensee and licensor uh, we have to very clearly specify these things specifically uh, very specially purpose field of use geographical territory duration the exclusivity and nature of the payments so when you are finalizing or when you are having uh, discussions with the licensee partner to commercialize uh, our inventions, we have to come up with the licensing agreements. So these are very important features that should be included into a licensee agreements. The purpose, the licensee will get the university invention for several purposes. Maybe outsider wants uh, our inventions for further R&D, 
for the research and development and improve manufacturing process. The companies, if they need to further enhance manufacturing process, they will approach universities and they will ask for license or the uh, license or uh, they will come up or propose to come up with licensing agreements and to manufacture a product. If they want to manufacture a product, the university, they can come, uh, uh, discuss with the universities and come to the university and uh, finalize licensing agreements. And to include some licenses, technology protected by IP in the licenses product or service. So if they want to, uh, so we can go for cross licensing, licensing in or licensing out. If the industry partners uh, needs our uh, products, that is licensing out. If the university wants outside technology, so the so dominant technology in the industry, so we can, that is called licensing in. So, so or we can go for cross licensing. Uh, to sell a product or service, uh, if, some, if one wants to uh, sell products, then they can get the license to uh, legally uh, manufacture product. And sometimes some uh, governments, the legal, the patent laws in some countries uh, reserve the right to grant compulsory licensing in philanthropic and humanitarian ground, especially when it comes to pharmaceutical uh, inventions. Uh, in the national interest, the government has right to ask for compulsory license. Maybe, maybe HIV, drugs or cancer, or even for if someone come up, come up with uh, an invention for COVID right? uh, drugs, then that is called compulsory license. Uh, uh, the, all the the license the uh, patent law has provisions for that. Yeah, the field of uh, purpose field, the markers or the application for which the licensee is authorized to make use of licensed technology. If it is uh, the technology is for respiratory disease, if the license is granted only that for that purpose, the licensee cannot use the license for other purpose. We have to include all, all these clauses in the licensing agreements. Uh, field of use. And geographical territory, countries in which license has IP rights and where the license is authorized to make the technology protected by the, yeah. So here, so geographical territory means, uh, so I should have protections in that geographical territory to license, to grant the license. Mm -hmm. Duration of technology license. Uh, so we have to be very clearly defined. We have to very clearly specify in the licensing agreements, the duration. So if it is five years, we have to specify it. The number of years license is granted. This number of years should not exceed duration of the patent rights, IP rights. If it is uh, 10 years, the balance period is 10 years, we have to grant the license for 10 years. And duration can be renewable if certain conditions are met, even after initially we can grant the license for five years. And later on, if they have met some milestones given by the licensor, we can uh, consider uh, further extend, extending the uh, period. So we can have all these clauses in the licensing agreements when it comes to technology licensing. Uh, degree of exclusivity very important. This is uh, whether we give, we have to decide whether we give the exclusive rights to the uh, licensee or whether we give non-exclusive license. So if you give the exclusive rights, we can give the license to another partner in the same territory for same purpose in the same field. If the licensee is not taking effort to commercialize the products, so that is, uh, it's risky for us. So we cannot go for another license, same territory. Therefore, 
So we have to go for non-exclusive non license. If it is non-exclusive, so we can, if the one uh, partner does not take uh, a first to commercialize the invention, so we have another option to commercialize our invention in another, uh, with another licensing partner. So therefore we have to very clearly specify whether we give exclusive rights or non-exclusive rights. If you are giving exclusive rights, we have to bargain more uh, royalties, uh, royalty percentage from the uh, net revenue. And if it is uh, non-exclusive, we can so compare comparatively, uh, we can ask for low uh, royalty rates. But we can uh, license it to uh, several partners. And so in the licensing nature of the payments, uh, we got uh, initially the inventors can ask for upfront payments and thereafter uh, annually uh, royalty fees, royalty payments annually uh, for the uh, grant the, the period. Uh, so what are the economic rationals? Uh, there are yeah, economic benefits of the license uh, uh, to, to the uh, to university. So, what are the universe, what benefits we get uh, from licensing or the commercializing inventions to the university? So, licensing revenue can be reinvested in research and innovation activities in the university. The inventors will get more money, so they get more freedom to invest, or even they can go for risky, uh, risky research uh, or the uh, more. Uh, the, or experimental research sometimes. Sometimes the, the success may be very, the chance of success may be very low, but still they have the cushion to invest them uh, more money so they can go for, for experimental research. And new technology comes to university through cross licensing. So the uh, from dominant technology in the uh, industry, so can be uh, yeah, taken to the universities and invest in students' welfare. So we can, the university get the share of the inventions, the money, funds, then the, we can re invest this money to the, for the betterment of the university students' welfare. And additional income for the inventors and also the invest in staff development, the university can use this extra money for the development of the university. So the university should not rely on the treasury funds. So it's so self-funded, the universities will become self-funded if they, if we can invest or, or invent more and more uh, uh, products in the, inside the universities. So this is uh, what, uh, uh, this is how you know the IP creates value for the professors. Uh, so this is a dominant drugs, famous drugs invented by university professors. And these are some university inventions. So, well, top brands, uh, Google, Facebook, Microsoft. So all these are university inventions, innovations. So they make you money out of the inventions. And these are global top brands. Uh, so these are also invented by universities. You see. So macroeconomic benefits, what are the economics? Stimulate economic growth. So more products will come to the market and more products will be exported by the country. So the, it will be good for the balance of payments, more foreign Revenue comes to the country, so that uh, enhance the university growth, sorry, uh, uh, economic growth. Finding solution for sustainable future. So if you invest in green projects and the, so we can minimize uh, carbon emissions. And so with the university, new innovations and induce uh, FDI, if more FDI will come to the uh, country and generate job and income. 
and bring technology know-how so outside know-how will come to the country competitive industries will be formed in the within the country the competition good for the consumers and ip can be used for cultural right so as uh, one gentleman mentioned so ips are being used nowadays as collateral so the cost of capital can be minimized and so the companies can go for higher risk high risky projects so those are some benefits economic benefits and yeah benefits uh, of knowledge transfer through researchers technology probability equity ownerships so they can so they will have their own technology they can claim the technology ownership probability and industry get new technology university royalties and equity positions um, research funding income from pin outs and licensing so a lot of benefits are there right? uh, economic benefits of uh, ip right uh, so these are still uh, so we have you know city missions still we have not very clearly spelled out uh, the importance of the uh, commercialization so we need to redraft uh, you know city missions focusing on like uh, uh, commercialization of in university i intellectual property still uh, we have to uh, redraft the uh, uh, university missions now these are issues faced by developing countries still lack of uh, scientists in the country and brain drain a lot of people the uh, spirit of the uh, developing countries are working in other countries and a small size market if the market is very small the yeah so we cannot uh, because the if the product cannot be marketed in the same market between uh, the inventors be reluctant to uh, come up with the uh, inventions so these are some common issues uh, faced by uh, developing countries so in order to get uh, maximum benefit uh, of inventions we have to work in unit you have to be united uh, with the industry government and the academia so a triple helix model so if the academia working in isolation so we cannot meet our desired target the government is not supporting universities to commercialize uh, inventions so we cannot achieve target and industry we have to link with industries to take the university inventions to the industry uh, outside they have to be together to get the to uh, get best benefit out of the university uh, inventions so these are some global still uh, i got from uh, i browse internet uh, this uh, wipo wipo statistical database so global patent fillings uh, yeah top 5 2017 yeah india is within 5 in terms of uh, patent filling globally first united states and also trade marks when it comes to trade marks uh, yeah india within 10 within 10 yeah so india is far better than sri lanka so and also the patent asia yeah china is the highest the top uh, patent uh, and trade marks china highest highest and also india also second in the asia yes india yes patent second first uh, china and even trademarks india is test second china is leading so these are global uh, scenarios uh, global fillings uh, china 2017 30 million and usa 600000 plus japan so more than 300000 korea 200000 plus and europe 
So these are some global statistics. So still, uh, yeah, uh, India is actually a uh, yeah far ahead than Sri Lanka when it comes to IP uh, intellectual property, and also there are very reputed universities in the in India. Uh, and also a scale of operation in Sri Lanka is still very uh, uh, basic uh, level. So we have to uh, work more to come to actually global standards. We have to do a lot of, uh, uh, lot of uh, practice uh, exercises and we have to dedicate more and more to come to a global standard in terms of uh, IP creations. So, and thank you very much. Uh, so these are some of my practice. Uh, so what I uh, practice in our university and also some of the insights in Sri Lanka and some global perspective uh, when it comes to uh, IP uh, commercializations and, uh, and IP feelings and so on. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes. Hello. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Dayaratne, for putting things into perspective for us. In the like to share, uh, have a discussion with you, your practices actually. Uh, so it's, it, it, it will be useful yes. for us to yes, uh, actually learn from your side. So this is, uh, this is actually a knowledge sharing session. So if you can yes, share your practices, how you are doing, and in university, how you, how you practice when, when you come up with an inventions in your university, so we'll be very happy to uh, hear from you. Sure, sure, sir. We'll try to make uh, make this in our practice. We have learned a lot from you, sir. Uh, to give a more insight into it, I'll request Dr. Bamnend Naram to please present uh, the sum up message. Um. Yes, Shri. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. If anybody have any kind of questions, uh, we yeah. Any of the Hello. participants who is willing to uh, ask something may ask. And before to the question uh, answer sessions, I I would like to welcome a very special person who has joined this uh, sessions, uh, Doctor uh, Piyush Kendukar. Uh, sorry. Is the senior faculty of IMS DAVV Indore, and um, unfortunately, his report shows the Corona positive in last week. Um, oh. But uh, yeah, it is a his great courage, and uh, he always live in a po positive attitude that he joined this online guest lecture from the hospital to Dersil. So I humbly and warmly welcome to Dr. Piyush Kendurka, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, yes, Shri, uh, please take the questions. Yeah, we welcome you, Piyush, sir. And now I request all the participants who is willing to ask anything may unmute his mic and ask. Or may leave the questions in set box also. Yeah, if you can share your practices in your university or some, uh, yeah, we'll be yeah, happy to hear from you. Hello. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. I wanted to know uh, how to go for copyright for any literary piece of work. For example, if it is a poem. So yeah. how do we go for copyright? What is the first step of initiation and how to follow it up? I had written the question in the chat box as well. Yeah, uh, that is, uh, you can uh, you can go for related rights. So you were uh, artistic work, any drama, teledrama. So that depends on your local uh, patron, uh, your uh, uh, copyright law in the, in the respective uh, country. So you can get uh, related right protections for your films or any drama or whatever it is. Hello. 
okay okay so i'll check for that you know you you mean to say that i have to uh, get back to our own country yeah. rules i just wanted to know this first step to uh, the countries uh, the different uh, jurisdictions different uh, yeah legal uh, procedures are there uh, and in some countries uh, we have uh, related rights uh, yeah, we can uh, if we have a drama or so on or any broker few broadcast anything uh, 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 so we can get the uh, related rights so that depends on the respect to the country's uh, pay, uh, the law actually as so i think i'm not a patent lawyer but uh, in my my understanding yes uh, you can go for related rights yeah good afternoon sir it's professor namandeep singh from vishesh school of management yeah uh, i just want to ask what is the role of plagiarism uh, while if we want to intellectually protect our any type of research as in plagiarism plagiarism is basically i mean it helps in uh, uh, making the research uh, uh, one of its kind so yeah. what if we want to go for intellectually protect it yeah when it comes to yeah so when it comes to uh, so plagiarism if you are you if you are using anyone else uh, properties without giving uh, due credit that is plagiarism so if you are using non patent literature say for example if you are using a journal article if you are extracting something out of the paper so without giving due credit to the owner of the property so you are plagiarizing but when it comes to patents so if you are using that, that is a infringing so that is the difference if you are using in the ip copyright properties so you are plagiarizing if you are using patented uh, properties you are infringing the properties so you will be charged but uh, yeah legal provisions for infringing is more severe than the violation of copyright law okay. thank you sir thanks yeah is there any more questions how you if yeah in india uh, how you yeah how you deal with the university inventions in your university so do you have any procedures so we like to know your practices actually uh, yeah what are your do you have ip policy so whether so if you can share your practices actually useful for us uh ikbal sir would you be interested in uh, giving answer to this so you are not audible hello yeah Jeez. yeah Uh, sir, uh, this time actually there is no clear cut policy uh, in universities and colleges to protect our intellectual property rights because uh, we directly uh, uh, work with the concerned authority of the intellectual property at the uh, this uh, trade um, uh, copy and trade uh, 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 copy and trademarks uh, authority under MSME actually they are working un under the Ministry of Micro Small Medium Enterprises in uh, India. so uh, that's why uh, plus uh, uh, in india there is a legal hurdles also a lot of legal hurdles to take place for uh, to reserve and to protect the intellectual property in is uh, this uh, universities and colleges so uh, we are lacking behind just because of this reasons um, yeah but now government is uh, promoting to take uh, more and more patents uh, from the education institutions for their innovations and research uh, yeah. but still uh, we are facing a lot of problems but i hope in coming days uh, uh, our government and concerned authorities and education institution will do much better in this field okay okay yeah
Yeah, thank you so much, Iqbal sir. Uh, now I request uh, Dr. Bamnain Naran to please present the sum of message and vote of thanks. Actually, Yashri, I think uh, due to some technical issues, uh, sir uh, left. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Uh, uh, so, uh, on behalf of Vishesh School of Management, I, Professor Yashri Dubey, uh, would like to thank uh, Dr. Daya Ratne, Dr. Paris, and all the dear participants for joining us. Indeed, it was a pleasure for us to get a word from you, sir. Uh, we actually learned a lot and will try to implement the same in our, uh, in our universities, at least if not implement in a one-to-one -one basis, but yeah, we'll try to give the guidelines or the suggestions or uh, whatever possible on our own basis. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. S.M. Anasikbal. Thank you so much, Dr. Bamnain Sinaran for providing us such an important and uh, meaningful platform wherein we could interact with, uh, with, the, the, with the other universities all the way from Sri Lanka. Thank you so much, all. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much for uh, having me for this webinar. Sir, uh, there is uh, some uh, request from the, all the participants. Uh, if you can share your PPTs to the participant, that will be much uh, forward to uh, Dr. Piris. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dr. Piris uh, will send you. I will send okay, you. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Right. Now I request uh, Professor Robin Nima to present uh, a certificate of appreciation to Dr. Dayarat Nesar. How can you do online? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I am sending the certificate to the Paris, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great time.